Hello, everybody. My name is Captain Paul Wilson, and I am joined here today with Lieutenant Colonel Aaron M. Jones. Uh, I'll call sign AIR. Lieutenant Colonel Jones is an evaluator pilot and the director of operations for the 81st, 81st Fighter Squadron, 14th Flying Training Wing, Columbus Air Force Base, Mississippi. The 81st Fighter Squadron is a tenant unit to the 23rd Fighter Wing at Moody Air Force Base, Georgia. And the mission is to graduate combat ready attack pilots and maintenance professionals for the Afghan and Nigerian Air Force. While with the 81st, Colonel Jones deployed to train, assist, advise command, Air Kabul, Afghanistan to advise Afghan A-29 pilots as the 438th Air Expeditionary Wing Advisory Squadron Detachment Commander. As the Director of Operations, Lieutenant Colonel Jones directs all aspects of the A-29 flying program and maintenance training program. He also supervises daily operations and manages more than 14,000 hours, 9,600 sorties flying our program. Colonel Jones, addition is also a Strike Eagle qualified pilot. Uh, he also has more than 2,200 total hours in the T6A, T38C, and F15E and A29. Colonel Jones, thank you so much for joining us today. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. Uh, I personally have appreciated your mentorship, friendship, and just the guidance you've given me since uh, I've known you. And so I wanted to open up uh, this interview by asking you what inspired you to join the Air Force and become a fighter pilot? Hey, Paul, thanks for the introduction, man. I really appreciate you taking your time this evening to allow me the opportunity to speak with you and, and, and execute this and help with it any way I can for, for the program and the projects that you're working on. So uh, your energy and your motivation for do, to do some of the things that you do outside of the Air Force as well as, as, well as the success you've had in your career so far is, uh, is inspiring. And, and I genuinely mean that as well. So uh, again, thanks for taking the time out and, and thinking of me for this opportunity. Um, <clears throat> You know, joining the Air Force has kind of always been a lifelong thing for me. Uh, I shouldn't say lifelong. I said I would say it started right about ninth grade. Um, and that's kind of when I realized that's what I wanted to do or being a, a fighter pilot was, in, in fact, the the dream that I wanted to pursue and the, the, the career that I wanted to, 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 to be a part of. You know, the story goes, um, my mother was an F-15 avionics troop. Um, we were visiting her in Japan, uh, obviously growing up in two separate households because my parents were split. Um, and we were visiting her and getting on the base one day, if you've ever been to Okinawa, it's got the, 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 the perimeter road runs, it splits and goes to the north side of the runway and then the south side of the runway. And one, one day in particular, we hit the base where it's just a normal day. No, normal day in the summertime um, and we had a uh, you know like one of those teenage mutant ninja turtle vans and the top was down or whatever the case was and we hit perimeter road we started just going our normal path to the community side of the base because we she worked on the back side of the base and as we hit perimeter road i could start to hear the thunder of the f-15 engines there's f-15 c's out there at kadena and i could hear that roar just echoing through the air and I had seen them before. It wasn't, this wasn't new to me, you know, but this particular day, it's just something about it that caught my attention, you know, and, and as we got closer to the runway, you know, the, the pilot releases brakes, the noise got louder and louder. And you look over and you can see the plane just accelerating down the runway. And at that moment, I looked over and I saw it. And it's almost like at that point in time, nothing else mattered. I just remember like gazing at the F-15, this beautiful monster just streaming down the runway. And as we got closer, it got closer. Uh, as we got closer, it got louder. And at that point, you could start to smell the burning of the, the, you know, the JP-8 in the air. And almost as if, if the pilot had done nothing else, he would have ran right into us. And that's how kind of how the, the, um, the line of sight was. And just as he hit the approach of the runway, or departure of the runway, we hit the departure of the runway and he just did a max performance takeoff. And I just remember staring up and I was like, 
that's what I want to do. And from there, it was history because I was exposed to the opportunity or the experience at such a young age. And by young age, I mean ninth grade, like it was literally my ninth grade summer. That's when I realized I wanted to wanted to be a pilot, wanted to be a fighter pilot. I wanted to fly a 15 Cs. So I started looking into it, you know, realized what it was that I needed to do, the things that would help me get to that path and just started going after it. And I had four years to in high school to make that happen. And, you know, the rest they say is history at that point. Um, and once I was able to figure out what it is I wanted to do and how what it was going to take to get there. Thank you, sir, for sharing that. And what I think is cool about what you shared is the fact that we're talking about women in aviation next month in March and celebrating women in aviation. And you brought up the fact that your mom was an avionics troop. I didn't, I didn't know that, but that in and of itself it brought you to that exposure to that F-15. And like you said, the rest was history. So I think it's, it's really neat to see that, you know, your mom had an impact as well in helping you uh, get exposed. And then from there, I, I know you also went on to the Air Force Academy, which is a pretty big deal to get accepted uh, to the Air Force Academy, uh, make it through the Academy, and then even get a pilot slot uh, leaving the Academy. Uh, so I think that's really awesome. And I think it shows a lot to your work ethic uh, and your motivation to see something and then internalize it and then pursue it. Uh, with all your might. So appreciate you sharing that with us. The second question I have for you, sir, is again, understanding that we're talking about women in aviation. Uh, do you have any advice or one piece of advice that you would give to anyone uh, pursuing the career path of wanting to become a pilot, whether it be a fighter pilot or just a helicopter pilot or a mobility pilot? What is one piece of advice you would give to someone who's looking to pursue that career? Yeah, definitely a really good question and something that I find myself answering a lot. And then, uh, you know, it just goes to show that there, the information is out there, and, um, but you have to look for it and being able to find um, what it is that you're looking for and the answers to help you get to the path that you want. Uh, with being a pilot, it's really no different. The, the, the best way, uh, the best thing I can say is find a mentor that will help give you the resources that you need or at least identify what those resources are uh, so that you can take advantage of them as they present themselves or become available to you. Um, <clears throat> if somebody already knows that's what they wanna do, there's programs out there that will help facilitate that. Some of these high schools are actually starting to develop their own aviation curriculum to help facilitate that part of it for the younger, for the younger generation. Um, you've got programs like Silver Air Patrol, Junior ROTC, um, if you're a little bit older than that, then being able to take advantage of some of the uh, scholarship opportunities that are out there that are often presented for folks that um, don't have the resources available to them in order to, um, you know, to become a pilot, because it, it can get it can get rather pricey. Um, but all that to say is, you know, throughout this whole journey as far as educating and introducing the opportunity to um, um, younger, 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 the, the folks in the community or the younger generation, one thing that I found is there's a limiting belief that needs to be squashed. Some people don't feel that they can be a pilot because they don't know anyone that looks like them. They've never seen anyone that looks like them. And that's really where it becomes, uh, it's uh, important for us to get out there and expose them to the opportunity, introduce them to th things that, that they thought may or may not even been possible to that point. So all that to say that the, the, the my biggest advice is, you know, find a mentor, find a program that's gonna help facilitate what your desires are. And ultimately at the end of the day, in order to really put yourself out there for to be a pilot specifically in the military, you know, you're going to have to knuckle down and, 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 and get those grades that are going to be required for you to accelerate through the programs or um, to achieve those programs. So uh, school is going to be your life. You have to be able to take advantage of it. You have to be able to, to perform well um, and then just find that program you want and go after it. Thank you, sir. And I 100% agree with that. I think it's so important that you have the right mentors and the right people who can invest in you and give you encouragement, also give you that knowledge 
that can help you get a jump start. So you're not just starting from scratch or you're just trying to figure things out on your own. And I think that's a great segue into my next question. And I've gotten to know, know you a little bit in terms of working together with you uh, in an organization called Legacy Flight Academy, uh, LFA. And I really wanted to give you an opportunity to talk about what LFA does and what is your role and involvement in LFA. And, and lastly, kind of three-part question, like how is LFA, uh, how can women uh, be inspired or even take advantage of some of the opportunities that LFA provides? Great, thank you for the opportunity for that as well. So, you know, as you know, Legacy Flight Academy is a nonprofit organization. It was founded back in 2014 with the sole idea of introducing the underrepresented demographic to the world of aviation. Uh, the numbers don't lie, they speak for themselves when you've got less than 2% of the aviation community, specifically pilots in both the commercial realm and, and the military side uh, are, are black pilots, right? There's no secret there, the numbers are low. Um, you, you factor in how many of them are black women, it's even lower than that. Um, so the point of Legacy Flight Academy was designed to introduce those folks to the opportunity um, to be able to see what it is, that they, to see that there's something else other than what they're used to seeing. At-risk youth, underrepresented demographic, that includes uh, other minorities, uh, persons of color, uh, women, nobody is excluded from participating in Legacy Flight Academy events because while our aim is to increase awareness within the minority communities, we also see that there's folks that don't have the opportunity, whether no matter what, the, what, what their background is. And we just want to see the spark that interest in the next generation. As far as taking advantage of Legacy Flight Academy, um, we're, there's some things that we do that uh, are open to the community, um, mostly, mostly all ages, uh, depending on what programs we are. Uh, offering, but uh, it is a three-tiered program. The first one being just getting out to the high schools, the elementary schools, and just sharing our story. Again, putting uh, faces that look like them in front of them and letting them ask questions. Uh, the second the second program that we do is called Eyes Above the Horizon. Uh, and that's a one-day event where we actually take the kids out to the airfield. Uh, it's character building, there's leadership, there's other STEM-based programs there or mentors to share their story. And then we tap, we, we cap the day off with a 20-minute flight or a 10 to 20-minute flight around the, the, the airfield that each student gets to fly. They actually get to put hands on stick and, and fly the aircraft. Again, uh, hope in hopes to spark that interest to come back for our third tier, which is actually a two-week summer program um, that down in Montgomery, Alabama, excuse me, not Montgomery, Tuskegee, Alabama, home of the original Tuskegee Airmen down at Moton Field and then take them from zero to hero and hopefully get them to solo within those first two weeks. But along those, along those, along those lines, we also consult with other, other groups to help you know, maximize our outreach. So there's only so much we can do as the, the 15 or 20 of us or so that are actually participating with Legacy Flight Academy. So the goal is to be able to link up and maximize the outreach within the community by linking up with other, other programs. Um, Sisters of the Skies, um, the 332nd Foundation, um, the Red Tail Scholarship Fund, things along those lines. So uh, as vice president of the organization, I, you know, we kind of oversee the, the broader outreach of Legacy Flight Academy again so that we can increase awareness, not just, you know, here in Valdosta or Moody, but, you know, Alabama, we've got folks in Atlanta, in California, Texas, Houston, D.C., like the goal is really to, to, to maximize the number of people that we can um, introduce to the opportunity. Yes, sir. And what I have to say is I remember one time, a couple of months ago, you invited me out to uh, mentor a young man who was a senior in high school. And he ended up going up in the aircraft with you. And that was his first time. He had never been in an aircraft before. He was extremely nervous about it. But once he came back down, landed, you know, got out of the aircraft and came back, he was like completely changed. He was extremely excited about the whole experience. And like you said, I think just that exposure, even if he doesn't even go on to become a pilot, like that confidence boost 
uh, that that opportunity that he had just to be around aviation could be that spark, you know, could be that seed planted that allows him to go on and pursue more uh, things in aviation. So for me, I, I really appreciated you giving me that opportunity to be a part of that mentoring moment and that like inspirational moment because like I was completely sold on the ideal before, but it was another thing just to be there in person to witness it. So I really appreciate uh, the work that LFA is doing and, and the hard work that you've brought to that organization and just giving me an opportunity to partner with it. I, I think that's something that we need more of, especially as you started off talking about the numbers of underrepresented groups are still very low for females and, and black females as it is. And so I think there's still a lot of work to be done that inside the military, but I think there's a lot of work to be done uh, before kids even get to the military, right? So uh, sir, uh, is there any final thoughts that you would like to add or just share to uh, the group at large? Yeah. Um... You know, like you said, the, the, the goal is to increase the diversity across the board. And one important fact or one important uh, uh, thing with that is that folks need to understand that increasing diversity doesn't mean lowering standards. Uh, a lot of time, the, you know, that gets conflated with the idea. As soon as we start talking about diversity, 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 folks want to assume that we're lowering standards in order to make that happen. Programs like Legacy Flight Academy and, you know, Debt One with the uh, Air Force Recruiting Service, so, you know, and the AIM, AIM High program is not to uh, water down the standards. It's to cast out a net that's broad enough that we can scoop up that talent that is capable of exceeding those standards while simultaneously increasing diversity within the ranks. And that's across the board. That's whether you're talking about blacks, Latinos, um, women, it doesn't matter. So first that's the, that, I think that's the piece that folks need to get away from is that diversity is uh, in the sense, in, increasing diversity is increasing awareness, increasing opportunities, increasing resources dedicated to those areas where they would not get them before because of X, whatever the case is. And that's important for folks to understand. Uh, the second thing is, um, you know, with March being Women in Aviation Month, I think it's important to highlight that, you know, Legacy Flight Academy is just one of many programs. Um, as I mentioned earlier, there's another program called Sisters of the Skies, and they focus on specifically more for women, uh, young girls out there. And I think that's, I think it's Houston, Texas. Uh, Pre-flight camp, pre-flight aviation camp, if I, if I, if I remember correctly, is, is based out of San Antonio. And they're, you know, they're focused on, uh, on women as well. So um, I just encourage any young girl that's interested in aviation to seek those mentors, seek those programs, because there are people out there that want to see them succeed. Um, and it's not, they're not just all women either. You know, we're all, we're all rooting for that increase in diversity uh, across the board. So. Well, thank you so much again, sir, for your time. I really appreciate your words of wisdom, uh, your words of encouragement, and, and just the, the effort that you've been putting in uh, over your career in the Air Force. Like you've volunteered so much time outside of being a director of operations because I know you believe so much in leaving a lasting legacy and also setting up the future generation of pilots so that we truly do have a more diverse and inclusive Air Force going forward. So thank you so much again, sir, for your time. Greatly appreciate it. Hey, Gamble, thanks again, man. I appreciate it and I look forward to seeing you around. Thank you, sir. Cheers.